incentive design is everything. Charlie Munger is one of my heroes in life, and he says, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. If there's one innovation in crypto, it's incentive structures that actually drive people to do things that benefit the whole. That is so huge. But these automated market makers create liquidity for the long tail. And so if everything is suddenly liquid, what happens there? What are the emergent results? And it's really interesting to me to start thinking about what all of those are. There is a protocol that I actually have helped create. I'm an investor and advisor to them. They're called Goldfinch. Um, and they are creating an emerging markets credit pool in the crypto world. And what's so interesting about that is it sits on top of these other building blocks that I'm just talking about. So what are they doing? They're essentially using liquidity that exists in the crypto markets, of which there is a lot, especially there's a lot looking for yield. People who want to earn current cash flow, quote unquote, but it's really crypto returns by staking their liquidity and going out and lending it to emerging markets borrowers. I have experience lending to emerging markets borrowers out of our fund, and we don't do that anymore for the most part. And the reason is it is so hard. Just the mechanics of getting money offshore and getting it back and paying taxes and doing all this stuff, it's not worth it. Not unless you're doing huge deals. And even then, it's just not worth it. What they're able to do in this protocol in Goldfinch is just, it's a literal 10x improvement off what exists in the fiat world. And I think there's some VC who says, if you're really going to create something great, it has to be 10x better than the alternative. I think it's really hard to find things that are actually 10x better, but like this is actually 10x better. You can send money across the world to a borrower in minutes. They have the money, they can use it, they can send it back to you with really no headache. And then also the potential scale that is going to be created by that, by Goldfinch. And so I'm really interested in that. There's a whole other component to it about how people underwrite loans and bring loans. And the short answer is there's a brilliant incentive structure that's been created to incentivize people to perform these various tasks with the protocol so that it can operate in a decentralized way. So there's not going to be 10 credit analysts there sitting there doing deals. There's going to be people that are crowdsourced from the crypto community doing this. And with the right incentives, you're going to get people who are really good at it. That's hard for people to accept, I think, that like, wow, there's someone that I don't know, that I don't trust, that's going to go out, is going to go out and do this, and they're going to do a good job. But if the incentive structure is right for that, it will happen. The last piece is, okay, well, let's say I wanted to invest my ether that I have sitting around doing nothing, and I want to start earning yield. How can I do that? Well, one way I can do that is I can trade that for the token that Goldfinch is going to launch. And I could buy the token and then I'll start earning yield. I will essentially lock my value into their pool and they will use that as liquidity to go and make real world loans and I'll earn that. Now, let's say I want my money back. Let's say I want to go and start trading again or something. I can take that and I can go and trade it with someone else who wants it. And I can do that via the automated market maker protocols. I don't actually have to go and ask for my liquidity back from the Goldfinch pool itself. And that's created by the AMM, which means if now I know that I can go and lend my money, but I have instantaneous liquidity. So what does that do for the cost of capital? It's significantly lower than it would be if I would, you know, am raising money in the fiat world. And I'm saying, okay, you're going to have to lock your money up with me for five years. People want a much higher return for that. And so there's this arbitrage that the protocol is creating. And then just to go down that rabbit hole one step further, there's an alternative, which is I can take my ether, I can go and I can borrow against it in this compound finance money market protocol. And I can use what I borrowed against it to go put that into the Goldfinch protocol and earn yield on that. So I actually can continue to get my exposure to ether if I have the long-term view that it's going to continue to go up in value. And then I can borrow against it, pay, you know, two or 3% and then lend it at 12. So I've got this like crypto carry trade going on. And like all of this, by the way, has been created in a year. When I think about what's going to happen in the world and like where one of the most interesting spaces is, it's crypto. Because this is an unstoppable force. Even if Bitcoin got hacked and it went to zero, it wouldn't matter anymore. What you're able to create, it has so much value so early on in the 
life cycle of the project. I've never seen that happen before in the traditional venture world. And you need a lot less engineering resources. Like I'm shocked to see what the Goldfinch guys are able to do so quickly because of the infrastructure they're building off of, because they don't need to bother with a lot of other things. It's just all code. And obviously the Goldfinch guys are really, really good at what they do. Like I don't mean to underplay that. 